Does Google track my movement? Uh, not by default. Thousands of companies are tracking you every day without your awareness. We don't sell any data to anybody. Does Google know? It doesn't feel like that to me. It's nuts. The secret is that big tech companies know that your data is inherently valuable. And they make millions and billions from your data every day, every week, every month, every year. And because of that, they try to make it as hard as possible for you to stop them from tracking you. Facebook users who do not want their personal information used for advertising might have to pay for that protection. People have a control over how their information is used in ads in the product today. In order to not run ads at all, we would still need some sort of business model. And that is your business model. Our lawyers, some of the best lawyers I've ever worked with, are a firm called Adelshaw Goddard. And recently, I actually went to an event with them. I was on a panel where we were talking about some of these topics. Do you think there's the sense that um, consumers overvalue? their own personal data. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. And it's, it's an education piece because again, I mean, right now, a lot of people don't even realize what's being collected, what's being tracked and how that's being used, let alone the ability to attribute a value to that is incredibly hard. There are so many active cases in the world right now with lawsuits, with people suing, with class actions. It's a hot topic because companies are getting it wrong all the time. And what's really interesting is the decisions that are made today are what's gonna impact the future. The question raised by this appeal is whether the claimant, Mr. Richard Lloyd, can bring a claim against Google LLC in a representative capacity, seeking compensation for damage allegedly caused to a large number of people through breaches of data protection law. DSARS, so the world of data is full of acronyms that have been made to confuse people. DSARS means data subject access request and really simply, it is the principle or the idea that you should be able to ask a company and say, hey, have you got my data? What data have you got? I want you to share a copy of that with me. So we are the subject. And even the word subject, it dehumanizes you. And they do that on purpose. Here's what everybody's been trying to tell you today. And I, I, I say this gently. Your user agreement sucks. I'm gonna to suggest to you that you go back home and rewrite it. And tell your $1,200 an hour lawyers, no disrespect, they're good. But, but tell them you want it written in English. That would be a start. So the whole idea of this is to allow people to have more control, more transparency and more autonomy over their data. So it's really important that anyone can do this and that it's free to do. But you will never guess what the government is suggesting. The bad guys have been arguing that companies should be allowed to charge you before they share a copy of your data with you. Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, uh, no. If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. I think that may be what this is all about. What I believe is that we shouldn't even need to do a DSARS. Like in a dream world, when you're using a service or a company, they will tell you so clearly and so easily and so obviously what data they're using and what they're doing with it that you shouldn't even really need to ask them to think that companies will then use this nominal fee as a barrier or a hurdle that they'll put in front of you because they know that if they charge you 10 quid, you don't want to do that. It's another point of friction. What we saw with GDPR, um, particularly for retailers, was the abolition of the £10, the nominal £10 fee, um, actually generated a huge increase in DSARs being used. I think GDPR is a great start. I think any legislation that gives people more control, more autonomy and more transparency over their data is fundamentally a good thing. What's really, really interesting is that once people do realise this is happening, 
overwhelmingly what we see is that they want to have a sense of control. Um, and interestingly, if we look at our stats, it's about 90% of our users opt into rewards mode. So they're happy to share their data, but they want the ability to choose what's shared, who's it going to, what's happening with it. So where I see the world moving to is into a direction where people can fundamentally control their data by bringing it into one location and by super easily choosing who, can, who they can share it with, who has access to it. And also by doing that, people will have the ability to get something back in return. Hello, Ken. Good. Where are we? Different setup to usual. Why? It's our last week here. Uh, Tuka's changed next door and we're going with him. So at the minute, it's just you and me, Ken. 